Hi, I'm Avery Rawson and this is my channel. Welcome. So as a chef, there are things that keep me awake at night, sometimes two, three in the morning. And these questions are, can you have too much chocolate in a dessert, in a cake, in a cookie? Let's try and find out. Here we go. Hi everyone, welcome to episode seven, quadruple chocolate raspberry cookie sandwiches. Get ready with your apron. Do a little warm-up dance because we have a lot to do. Get out your scale. You'll need a mixing bowl and into it goes 300 grams of sugar and 288 grams of cold cubed butter. Separate the cubes. It will make it easier during the mixing process. Bring out your stand mixer. Use a paddle attachment. Turn it onto a medium to low speed. Beat the butter. Get out another medium mixing bowl and place a sieve on top. Measure 440 grams of plain flour, three grams of table salt, three grams of baking powder, three grams bicarbonate of soda, and 100 grams of rich cocoa powder. Sieve it and place aside. Now, in another small bowl, measure 60 grams of milk. In another small bowl, break two eggs. Oh, we nearly lost that one. And also add 48 grams of egg yolks, which is about two yolks. You can save the egg whites in a Ziploc bag and place in the freezer for another project. Or you can have an egg white omelette. Add 15 grams of vanilla essence to the eggs. Over here, we have dark chocolate and white chocolate. White chocolate's my favorite. Take out a slip mat, a large knife and a cutting board. I'd like a piece of that. Use two or three fingers while cutting to keep the knife stable. Cut even strips. Now the other way to create little cubes. This is what we're looking for, tiny like this. Save it in a bowl and place aside. Do the same for the dark chocolate. This dark chocolate was a little brittle and hence didn't come out with perfect cubes, but that's okay. It'll taste just the same. Sieve the chopped chocolates. We don't want the chocolate dust to go into the cookie mix because it would make it dry. Save the chocolate dust to make hot chocolate or sprinkle onto buttered bread and enjoy it as the Dutch do. Dutch chocolate sprinkles or hagelslag is a treat that originated in the Netherlands and now are available in a wide variety of tempting colors and flavors. Hagelslag is typically sprinkled on buttered bread so that the sprinkles don't fall off. Avery taught me that. Check your beaten butter. Use a spatula to scrape the bottom of the bowl. Beat in some more until it becomes lighter in color. Now you can pour in the egg and vanilla essence. After that goes in, mix in half of the dry ingredients. Give it a nice scrape. Pour in the milk. Once it has come together, check the batter. Pour in the chopped white and dark chocolate. Give it a quick mix. There should be an even spread of chocolate pieces everywhere. Clean your paddle. Avery is using a cupcake tin to bake the cookies in so that there is an even bake and a uniform outcome, which will help when assembling the cookie sandwiches. Roughly measure the base of the cupcake tin. You do not need to do this step if you prefer a more rustic looking cookie, but try to keep an even shape and size. Take some batter and place on the baking mat because we're going to roll it out. You might have to take out some batter or add some depending on the size of the log you're working on. The trick to rolling this is using a cutting board. Roll to shape and check. Place on a tray and put in the freezer to let it firm up. You can do the same with baking paper. Here is a different rolling technique for you. You can make a few and keep them in the freezer for up to three months, in case you have a mid-afternoon cookie craving. I have them a lot. There you go. While you are waiting for the dough to firm up, you can make the jam filling. 
Avery is using frozen raspberries because they are more economical for this kind of project than fresh ones. Place 300 grams in a small pot. Set on a medium heat. To give it some sweetness, add sugar. A good rule of thumb is to use 10% of the weight of your chosen fruit. In our case, that is 30 grams. Measure out 10 grams of pectin powder. Use less for a runnier jam and more for a firmer jam. Mix with the sugar. Give the pot a little shake because we don't want to burn the raspberries. Keep a tray on standby. Pour the sugar and pectin mixture into the pot. Stir well and let boil for at least five minutes to activate the pectin. Once the timer goes off, pour the jam onto the tray. Spread it evenly to cool. Do a test by drawing a line, and when the line stays in place, it means the jam will be firm enough when cooled. And of course, I need to taste that. Wrap with cling film, touching the top of the jam. Place in the fridge to cool. Now, time to check on the cookie dough. If the mat or paper does not peel off cleanly, the dough needs more time in the freezer. Not long to go. You're going to be using quite a lot of fridge and freezer space for this recipe. On to the outer filling. Now, in a small bowl, cube 48 grams of butter and place aside. In a small pot, measure 450 grams of milk. Add 90 grams of double cream. Place on the stove on a medium to high heat. In the meantime, measure out 300 grams of milk chocolate and 150 grams of white chocolate. Grate the chocolate, but watch out for your fingers. If the piece you are grating becomes too small, just eat it like Avery does. He eats a lot of chocolate. It's a real shame he doesn't know how to share. Place the grated chocolate to one side. In a small mixing bowl, measure out 78 grams of yolks, which is roughly four yolks. You can keep the spare whites in the same Ziploc bag you used earlier. Add 27 grams of corn flour and 72 grams of sugar. Baking is an exact art. Take a small whisk and mix everything together. Keep on standby. Now we are waiting for the milk and cream to come to a boil. Once boiled, pour the milk and cream into the egg, corn flour and sugar mixture. This is called tempering, so that we don't shock the eggs with high heat straight away. Pour it back into the pot and turn onto a medium heat. You will notice the mixture curdle and thicken. This is all normal. Whisk vigorously and let boil for two minutes to cook off the corn flour. Pour in the grated chocolate. We grated the chocolate so that it melts evenly while we whisk it. Once all the chocolate has melted in, take the butter that was resting at room temperature and slowly whisk a few cubes in at a time. Once a few cubes have disappeared, toss in more cubes. You are done whisking when everything is mixed well. We are going to use a sieve to really ensure everything is smooth. Pour the mix through the sieve onto a large tray. Watch that glass. Use a spatula to scrape the pot. This is where you know all that whisking pays off. Look at that, no lumps. Have a taste. Avery always tastes before I do. I need to keep reminding him to share. He has only child syndrome. Cling film to touch the surface and place in the fridge so that it can firm up for at least two hours. Now, time to check on the cookie log again. Unwrap from the baking paper. Spray the cupcake tins well. Set your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Cut portions about one finger in width and place in each slot. Fill up the whole tin. Bake for about eight minutes. Bake for longer if you want crunchier cookies. Take them out of the oven and let them rest for at least 30 minutes. Have a touch. Look at that soft center. Once the cookies have cooled completely, take them out of the tin. Very simply, place your fingers on the top and twist like this. 
that just loosens the bottom. You can use a knife to help you lift them out if you need to. Place them on a tray if they need to cool further. There you go, some uniform sizing. Here is where we take a moment to match make them so they fit perfectly like a sandwich. Once they are all lined up, we can go to the next step, which is building them. Take the tops and turn upside down. Just remember that this is the top of your sandwich. You can use a glass as a stand to hold your piping bag while you fill it. You do not need a nozzle for this bag. Fill it with the jam, nice and firm. Tie the bag and keep aside. Now onto the chocolate filling. Here Avery is using a round tip piping nozzle. Take off the cling film and place aside because you can reuse it if you don't use all of the chocolate filling. It makes a really nice topping to ice cream. Take your piping bag with the nozzle and fill it with chocolate cream. Always do a piping test to check for consistency. Keep the chocolate filling aside. Pipe the chocolate filling first. When you pipe around, make sure to close the circle. Finish your chocolate rounds first. Now, time to pipe in the raspberry jam filling. Pipe a generous amount to fill the center. This is the bite surprise. Time to sandwich the cookie. Remember to flip the tops as you place them down. Press down gently so that the tops kiss the filling. There you have it, a quadruple chocolate raspberry cookie sandwich. That's a mouthful. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment and subscribe. See you next time. Well, thank you for watching. And today we've learned that you can never have too much chocolate. And that's a fact.